Hi Taurus, welcome to your May 2024 Astro Tarascope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign, though if you're only going to watch one, make sure it's for your ascendant sign. It's going to be that much more accurate for you on the day-to-day -day level. I am using whole sign tropical Western astrology for those of you that would like to know. And if I ever forget the transits or the dates, etc., you will always find that stuff in the description box below. With that said, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. And they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. Ooh, that one went right through me. <laughs> so on the first of the month, right out of the gate, Mars comes into the sign of Aries, right? It comes right in at zero degrees of Aries, which is, ooh, okay. So that's going to be your first card. That's going to be your second. That's going to be your third, right? So, okay. <laughs> your, uh, your Mars comes into your 12th house, right? So Mars coming into the 12th, uh, it doesn't always have to be destructive, but it can bring um, a more active dreamscape, right? Because the 12th house really does represent your, your, um, come on brain, your 12th house represents your, your sleep, right? It represents your, your boudoir, darling. So it could also be an amplification of your sex and sensuality. Uh, your intimate life could be ramping up here as well. It could be also that it provides you with the energy that you need. Remember, Mars can be a severing energy. So it can help you remove or release something in your life. And what tends to happen with this is it makes it easier to get rid of something or to cut something out. So it could be where you get really proactive about working with your shadow it's Aries in the 12th so this could be like maybe you find a really physical way of working um of working through some kind of uh what's the word that I'm looking for like of working through your challenges or maybe even your self-sabotaging tendencies because Mars for you rules the 12th and it also rules your seventh house of relationships this could also be where you're moving forward from a past relationship and it's like you're accepting or acknowledging the trauma or the hurt from it but you're able to move beyond it right that Mars helps you it can Mars in the 12th can also bring more violent dreams as well more sort of active um, but this can be a very sexy very sensual time for you so love that so the cards that fell out for you were the nine of swords the magician and the page of cups right and so what this says to me um, is this transit of mars through your 12th house it's really going to show you where you allow your mind to get the better of you this is it's almost like you're going to become very aware of how your internal dialogue your thought process and patterns etc really wreak havoc on your, your on your emotions right so that's one way this will show up another way that this shows up for you as well because the twelfth house can be also hidden enemies. Most of those, t t most of the time, those hidden enemies are the things that I'm talking about: bad habits, self-destructive patterns, um, you know, thought processes. Most of the time, that's the hidden enemy, right? Every so often, it is an actual, literal person. And if there is somebody that you've had, like an, if me saying like a hidden enemy. If you're getting like a picture in your mind or an intuitive hit right now, you're probably bang on, right? I've said this before many times, Aries is a very psychic sign. Um, okay, so uh, on the 16th of May, Mercury is going to enter the sign of, where are you Mercury? Mercury is going to enter the sign of Taurus, right? So as if it wasn't enough, you've now got the sun in your sign. You've got Uranus for a little while longer at least. You've got Jupiter still there, 11 months and change at this point. And now you've got Mercury. This sets up what we call a stellium, right? This is where your first house, your physical body, your mind, your outlook, your personality, everything about you that is you in the tangible, in the real world, how you navigate through life. Life, that's all the first house, right? So 
Mercury comes into your sign, immediately makes you more thoughtful, potentially more organized at this time as well. You might find that you feel really like proactive and gung-ho about sort of getting your proverbial ish together, right? Oh, I also forgot to mention, happy damn birthday. I truly hope you have a wonderful solar return. If you are celebrating this month, happy damn birthday to you. Have a wonderful day and remember to fill the day of your birthday with a little bit of everything in the year ahead that you that you would like from your life in the year ahead, right? So little tokens of everything throughout that whole day. Um, now this stellium, Mercury for you rules your money because it rules Gemini and it also rules your sixth house, um, sorry, also rules your fifth house of pleasure, joy and romance, which makes me think that you might be spending money on a bit of a glow up of some sort. I love that. Or maybe some kind of a personal project. Absolutely love that. If you've got children, you might be spending money on activities that bring you guys closer together. That could be really wonderful, right? There's also, because Mercury is the energy of haste and speed, it's also transactions, money, finances, resources, things that zip back and forward, right? Commerce, trade, all of that stuff. Convincing others that you are the right person for the job is so easy to you now that it's laughable, right? As if that wasn't enough, at this point, Venus is going to be in your sign. So Venus is coming home, right? So the Mercury retrograde and the Mercury retrograde shadow is done. Venus is in your sign. Wherever Venus goes, she beautifies us. She makes us that much more beautiful. It becomes that much more easy for us to, uh, you know, to look good, to feel good. Um, it also becomes that much easier to overindulge, right? And with this much energy in your sign, whether it's sugar, whether it's spending, whether it's the other uh, can of pleasure with uh, Mars in that 12th house, as I was saying, those boudoir pleasures, darling, uh, this could be a wonderful time for you. But there is a potential that you can take it a little bit too far. But look, if you can't do that around your birthday, what the fuck, man, right? Okay, so um, it also means that you are shining, right? Because Venus is talents and skills. Mercury is communication. So you're able to communicate your skills, why you are the person for the job, why you are the one that should be chosen. You're able to communicate this in ways that make people just like, maybe some people are gonna be intimidated by you at this point as well, because you are like lit up like a beacon. Okay, for this you have the Ace of Swords, potentially new contracts coming in with the Ten of Cups. This, whoa, all right, so this could be a new contract around a home or a property uh, with the King of Pentacles. The money that you need is available to you. This could be around a job or a career sector matter. Uh, absolutely love this for you. For those of you that have your own business, this is going to be a very juicy time, so I'm very happy to see that for you. King of Pentacles is you in some way, shape, or form, whether you're a man or a woman, however you identify as irrelevant. This sees you literally in your element right now okay so i love it i absolutely love this now if that king of pentacles isn't you this could be a family member it could be uh, an idea it could also be an ideal that you've been striving for or to have in some regard and now it starts to materialize right for those of you that are looking for work if you've been out of work all the rest of it this bodes very very well for you all right. Whoa. Look at that. Okay. So then on the 19th of the month, Mars is going to come into a conjunction with the North Node. This is a pretty big deal for everybody. Pay attention to your dreams at this time because you could be getting really powerful messages through your sleep, through dreams, through visions, through trance, through meditation. This is a really great day to do all of the above, right? The North Node is an amplification point. It's in your 12th house of dreams, psychic awareness, soul awareness, the collective unconscious, all of that. Mars is going to bring an action to this, right? So if you pay attention to this, especially to people or situations that come back from the past, it's like you're being a, given a glimpse right now what you need to move, uh, what you need to release in order to move forward in your life. If you want, because anything that happens with the North Node has the ability to really push us forward in some big way, right? Um, it may not show up on the day, but it will definitely start to unfold, right? You're setting that uh, something into motion. 
Because Mars for you rules this 12th house, but it also rules relationships, my money is on this being around relationships. If you're single and you've been single for a while and you kind of feel like you might be ready, this might be a time where maybe you have a dream where an ancestor that has passed over, you know, a great aunt or an uncle or a parent or a, or a, uh, a grandparent or whatever the case might be, or maybe even just, you know, your favorite celebrity that's no longer with us. Maybe someone comes to you in a dream and says, this is what you need to do in order to be ready for a relationship. Or the reason you can't get, you know, you can't get, find somebody to be in a relationship with is because of this and it needs to be fixed. Uh, maybe you have, a, you know, maybe you do a meditation and something comes to you and it just sparks something. If you're partnered, married or in a long-term commitment and you're having problems or issues in your relationship, this is going to show you what needs to be removed. Some inspired action that you can take right now that will allow your, you to align with the greatest relationship that you can possibly have. This also suggests that your soul mission, right, 12th house is the soul, uh, or has links to the soul, if we, if we put it like that. Um, this is like your soul mission, or the actions that you need to take for your soul mission become uh, like clearer to you at this time. For this, you've got the king of wands, okay with the two of pentacles and the three of cups. I'm laughing about this because I have a friend who's a Taurus rising and every time I read for her, the king of wands comes up. And so we always say like, we don't know who he is, but when he shows up, we're gonna know it, right? Uh, <laughs> and here he is, right? I'm talking about the North Node conjunct Mars in the 12th, ruler of your seventh house of relationships and partnerships as well. Uh, like this is crazy so for all of you in some way for shape or form for those of you that are single you could be connecting with a fire sign you've got this with the two of pentacles which means some form of flow that you need to move into in order to have this new relationship is what's going to be revealed to you for those of you that are partnered and married in long-term commitments you're getting back to where you were previously it's like you're getting back to a time where your relationship was really good I actually really like this and I really love this for some form of visibility. I think especially like because you've got this stellium going on, if at this time you're like, well, you know, Raph, I don't really feel like I'm shining right now. This this north node conjunction of Mars is going to show you why. All right. So at this point on the 26th of May, Jupiter moves into the sign of Gemini. This is a pretty big deal because it's a once in 12 year transit. It immediately comes into a conjunction with Venus. And those two are, the, so the greater benefic and the lesser benefic are going to immediately trine Pluto in Aquarius. Now, before we get into that, if you would like to study tarot, if you would like to take my 12 week tarot course, you can get that on the link in the description box below. This is 12 weeks. I take you literally from the very beginning right through to intermediate level. I have, you're gonna spend 12 weeks with me and a bunch of like-minded souls. You're gonna get bonus videos, PDF content, more PDFs so you can shake a stick at. I worked really hard on bringing this course to life and I have to say it's been one of the best things I've ever done. I love teaching it. It's something that I'm really passionate about. I only take 20 students at a time or up to 20 students at a time. And if the group is smaller than that, it doesn't bother me. And I tell you why, because I get to know you individually so that I can see how I can best support you. And I put things in place, client demos, client practice, all kinds of wonderful things to get you to, to be in effectively the best tarot reader that you can be. If you wanna take this course, 747, payable in three installments, check it out. I promise you, you will love it. It'll be one of the best things that you do this year. I won't run another one this year because I've got lots of other things that I'm going to bring you at the second half of this year. And uh, on top of that, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's some developments going on. All right. So uh, this Jupiter in Gemini, in your second house of money, finances, resources, self-esteem, self-worth, what you value, and also food, right? So <laughs> at this time, that sweet tooth that I was talking about with the stellium in your sign is going to be amplified here, right, as well. So you've got like a good couple of months of, of the real sweet tooth business going on, all right? So just keep an eye on that. Now, Jupiter for you rules your um, 
eighth house and your 11th house, right? Now, what I will say, this can be a joyous time, right? Jupiter moving through the second can be a wonderful time for money, but it can also make you a bit spenny, right? Like you could get a little bit heavy with the credit card or whatever. Watch out for that, right? Because it's immediately coming into a conjunction with your ruling planet, Venus. So you're going to want these nice things. You're going to want to splash the cash. You're going to want to do whatever you want to do. And I advise that you do within reason. Because it's coming directly into a, con uh, a trine with Pluto in your 10th house of career, this means that there's going to be some kind of big blessing or opportunity because remember the, the greater benefic and the lesser benefic are in your second house trying to pluto jupiter trying pluto or jupiter harmonious jupiter pluto aspects are known as the millionaire maker whether that translates you know there's not a, a hundred billion you know well it's not even a hundred billion people in the world but you know there's what i'm saying is yes you have to work it right it's not and not everybody does and this is the thing with a jupiter transit in the second everyone's like oh yeah that's it i can just sit back and money's going to rain down on me no you still have to work it jupiter only provides the opportunity you have to do something with it right but in a trine to pluto this could be a really wonderful blessing or opportunity that comes through the career that could potentially really enhance your finances. Because Jupiter expands everything that it touches, it can also see you getting a bit heavy, heavy handed with the spending. Either way, I think it will be worth it. I love this. Um, since the 10th house and Pluto are involved, I'm definitely seeing a potent financial blessing or a deal that's made in some regard that financially sets you up for your future. Uh, if you're spending money on some kind of technology uh, or some kind of new skill for your work, your job or your business, go for it because the results will be incredible. For this, you've got the Seven of Wands. You got the Ace of Pentacles and you got the Six of Swords. So if you're having any um, potentially challenges around money, finances, uh, around any sort of contract when it comes to money at this time, or you're having a bit of a battle with somebody, don't worry. It will settle in your favor. You will be fine. Ace of Pentacles, potentially a new job, uh, but it could also be potentially a new home. With the Seven of Wands, be careful about getting into a bidding war. All right. Just something to be mindful of. Uh, and then... For your uh, lunations, let's get into this. On the 8th of May, we will have a Taurus new moon, right? So the moon will be here. And obviously that will still be there. Um, and I think, yeah, at this time, Venus will still be there as well. So this is a lot of energy at this new moon, but it's a wonderful new moon, right? And this is in your first house. This is a fresh start of you, who you are, how you show up in the world, how people get to know you, how people really start to understand who you are and interact with you. Lots of wonderful change coming from this new moon. And for this, you've got the gate 63 in doubt. And you know what? I know a lot of you are like, oh, well, that doesn't seem so wonderful. No, it doesn't. And maybe this is highlighting to you where you need to get out of your own damn way, where you need to stop doubting yourself, where you need to take back your power or your sovereignty, where you need to stop doubting who you are and the potential that you have and just start living like you are that bitch. All right. So <laughs> why not? <laughs> On the 23rd of May, we will have the Sagittarius full moon. Sun will be in Gemini. Jupiter will be in Gemini at this point as well. Uranus will be there. And Venus will be here as well. Um, so this is going to be a Sagittarius full moon on the 23rd of May. And so the new moon in Taurus will be at 18 degrees. The full moon in uh, Sagittarius will be at two degrees of Sagittarius. This is in your eighth house of uh, joint finances and resources, other people's money, uh, anywhere that there are put or have been things lurking in the background in regard to those financial commitments, etc. They will be revealed at this time. This might also be where some kind of trauma or challenge or part of your history that's been getting in the way is revealed to you. Some kind of, um, 
what's the word some kind of you know wound or you know something that you've been carrying that you might not have even been aware of it could also be a very psychic or very spiritual moment that happens for you at this time and look at that the gate 57 and intuition around the time of this full moon trust your gut trust your intuition because it's going to be fire at this time even if what you're getting right and i will say if you're having an intuition at this time and you you kind of like i don't know if this is real check in with a trusted advisor right check in with a confidant somebody who you know will give it to you straight but trust your intuition because even at the moments where you think mm, i'm not sure you will see very quickly like actually you know what i'm right and i know it all right with that said i wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff let me know in the comments how it shapes up again happy damn birthday to you true uh have a great week uh, a great week have a great month take care and i'll see you soon